Hello, everyone. My name is Heijin Kim. Um, I'm currently the head of the Information and Data Unit at the ASEAN Korea Center. Um, today, we will be talking about ASEAN Korea economic cooperation as trading partners. So, let's take a look here. So, here is the, a brief outline of my presentation. I will first be giving you an overview of the ASEAN Korea relations, touching on some of the milestones in the 30 year history of dialogue partnership. Um, we will then take a closer look at the economic relations and exchanges that are taking place both on bilateral level and also within this region. Next, we will see how the Korean government is, has been strengthening its relations with ASEAN through the new Southern policy. And then following this, we will talk about the way forward, especially in the post-coronavirus era. Finally, I would like to introduce you to some of the programs of the ASEAN Korea Center that are geared towards uh, promoting ASEAN Korea relations that you may find useful in your work. So let's get started. Um, ASEAN and Korea dialogue partnership began back in 1989. It first began as a sectoral uh, relationship, and then two years later, this was quickly upgraded to a full-fledged dialogue partnership. So we are the seventh dialogue partner for ASEAN, and in fact, one of the first as a developing country at the time. That's why it began as a sectoral dialogue partnership. In fact, this was one of the reasons back then that made ASEAN countries a little reluctant in engaging with Korea. Um, ASEAN at the time was seeking uh, cooperation with more economically advanced countries, and Korea, as you know, in the 1970s and 80s was uh, still in the process of developing, although at a very, uh, very fast speed. So, but you know, as we have witnessed uh, since then, mm, ASEAN and Korea quickly became very close economic partners in 30 years' time, and trade volume grew since then uh, 20 times. Um, investment over 100 times, and people-to-people -people exchanges grew over 40 times. ASEAN and Korea since then have, been, have signed and put into effect the free trade agreements in both goods, uh, services, and also in investment, which all came into effect in 2007 and 2009, respectively. And Korea today joins in all of the ASEAN-led meetings. The two sides have also held uh, three commemorative summits. You can see here in 2009, 2014, and 2019. Uh, as, um, it, and this is actually the first uh, dialogue partner to do so, to have three commemorative summits uh, within the 30-year period. Uh, even on issues of North Korea today, uh, ASEAN plays an important role in promoting peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, as was seen uh, when Singapore and Hanoi uh, hosted the first two ever U.S.-North Korea summits back in 2018 and 2019. So, uh, how close are ASEAN and Korea? So here are some numbers. Um, in trade, ASEAN and Korea recorded 160 billion U.S. dollars in 2018. You can see the little spike here in the graph. Uh, last year, the volume fell, fell a little bit to 153 billion U.S. dollars. This was due to the global, uh, overall global economic slowdown. However, ASEAN still remains, as you can see in the chart above, in the table above, it, it remains as the second largest trading partner to Korea after China, and Korea is currently the fifth largest um, trading partner to ASEAN as a region. Uh, looking at the individual countries here in the pie chart, the large bulk of trade is with uh, Vietnam, the green part. Uh, and then it followed by, you can see Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and so on. Almost 50%, uh, 46 to be exact, of the trade uh, with ASEAN is concentrated in, in Vietnam. And this is, you know, calling for, there are, uh, uh, so there are concerns that there is an over-concentration in Vietnam, and some, many scholars or many uh, professionals are calling for a diversification of trade, even with uh, Vietnam. But the reason behind, why, why did this concentration happen is probably a question that many people have in mind, but uh, the reason behind this concentration, or rather the background, is the closely connected production network 
that, uh, between Korea and Vietnam. So since the late 90s, um, Korea and Vietnam established uh, the diplomatic relations back in 1992. And since then, uh, in, from the late 90s on to early 2000s, many, many, many Korean companies began to invest in Vietnam, moving their production sites nearby, first in the Ho Chi Minh City area in south and then to Hanoi uh, in the north. So you probably already well know, but the largest investment uh, from Korea to Vietnam was, uh, of course, uh, made by Samsung. Uh, Samsung now has two large production cell phone plants in uh, the northern part of Vietnam. Uh, and in fact, the exports of the Vietnam manufactured Samsung cell phones uh, make up almost 20% of Vietnam's total export today. So naturally, as the production network expanded, trade of intermediate goods and parts uh, between Korea and Vietnam also increased, leading to an overall increase in the trade volume. So here you can see some of the top 10 export products from Korea to ASEAN, as well as top 10 import products um, in, in 2019. Uh, manufacturing products and parts thereof make up the large um, portion, large share of both import and exports because of the production network built up between the two regions and because most of the investments that were made in the, uh, up until now is largely in the manufacturing sector. And also as an energy importing country, Korea also imports um, you know, natural resources such as natural gas and crude oil from the ASEAN region. Oh, there we go. Um, Korea, as you well know, is an export-oriented country. I believe you had a core separately on the FTA uh, network of, of Korea, but um, like Korea and, you know, ASEAN is also a very export-oriented country, and so we all have a very complex network of free trade agreements with countries around the world. So this is the FTA network of Korea uh, as of, um, I believe, uh, December last year. Um, in Southeast Asia, the first FTA was with Singapore uh, back in 2006, and then, as I had mentioned earlier, in 2007, the free trade agreement on goods um, came into effect between ASEAN and Korea, and then in 2009, we had the agreement on services and the agreement on investment. And then since then, uh, I believe it was 2015, yes, Korean uh, uh, Vietnam uh, had uh, signed the FTA agreement on a bilateral level. And, you know, in addition to the production network that was very closely linked, this FTA naturally gave uh, exponential growth in the trade volume between Korea and Vietnam. Uh, last year, Korea uh, signed the Comprehensive Economic um, Partnership Agreement with Indonesia on the occasion of the uh, bilateral summit that took place uh, during the uh, commemorative summit of ASEAN and Korea. And um, there were also some significant progress that were made between the negotiations in the FTA agreements between uh, Malaysia and the Philippines. Now you see Cambodia here. We also began uh, the negotiations of the FTA with Cambodia. So, you know, this is something Something that's, uh, is a, I, I believe this is an overall trend in this region for, for open and free trade. Um, now, there's also RCEP here, you see here, uh, 2019, last year, uh, the <coughs> leaders of the 15 members of RCEP, uh, initially included India, but India stepped out of it for now, uh, the leaders of the 15 countries had um, concluded the, the text, the negotiating text of RCEP, and everybody's now looking forward to the signing of this agreement because that would send a very positive message throughout this region about the, the, about the commitment of these countries on free trade. And also, once this agreement comes into effect, uh, it'll definitely be a great contribution to increasing the volume of trade in this area. Investment. Um, in investment, so ASEAN is the third largest investment destination for Korea. Uh, Korea invested uh, a total of 6.1 billion uh, U.S. dollars in 2018, and the number you see here, 9.5 billion uh, U.S. dollars in 2019 alone. And the cumulative investment in the region since 1968 around is about 61 billion uh, U.S. dollars. So you can see, you know, as I said, ASEAN is the third largest de destination, and it's uh, before it used to be fourth because China was ahead, but now uh, ASEAN uh, has um, become a larger investing destination for Korea. 
Now, one of the trends in Korea's FDI to ASEAN is that most investments made in recent years are for purposes of entering the ASEAN market. So before, if it was to, uh, to make more exports to third countries, you, you know, make, taking, uh, uh, making use of the young and talented labor in ASEAN, now it's more about trying to uh, attract ASEAN consumers in this region. Um, you know, ASEAN has been uh, has launched the ASEAN community back in 2015, and the region has made a lot of institutional efforts to accelerate integra integration and connectivity. So the region has become increasingly attractive to businesses who are looking to benefit from the large consumer market of 650 million people. So if before ASEAN was more attractive as a production base, now it's becoming growingly increasingly attractive as a consumer market. And as ASEAN countries grow economically, because this is a region where you've been recording uh, economic growth of uh, an average of over 5% every year, uh, so is their middle class growing uh, with a larger purchasing power. And in addition to that, this is a region where the population is still growing. You know, in many countries around this, uh, in East Asia, there are, uh, the population is shrinking, it's beginning to shrink with the uh, aging society. But in ASEAN, uh, we still have a, a very, um, a strong foundation of population growth and uh, with growing purchasing power they will be very attractive uh, consumers for many manufacturing companies. Which is why you can see here uh, many Korean companies established uh, wh which is why the number of the Korean companies uh, established in ASEAN is also increasing. So if you look at here, the, uh, this is the total number, this is a cumulative number and then below you have you see 1393, these are the number of the total new companies that were established in 2019 alone. So you can see uh, an exponential growth of Korean companies being established in ASEAN countries, which is very telling about these companies trying to enter the ASEAN market. Um, so over the years, uh, manufacturing took, as I said, manufacturing is a large part of Korean ASEAN economic relations uh, until now. And so manufacturing took up the largest share of investment. And this really area continues to be the most <coughs> invested area, <coughs> excuse me. Um, especially, you know, when multinational companies such as Samsung, LG, Hyundai, and POSCO invest in ASEAN countries, uh, many partner companies accompany these large companies and the, this really contributes to the overall investment volume. Uh, in recent years, investments, and you can see in the, rank thir th in the third rank, the financial insurance, real estate, wholesale, retail trade, these are investments in services. Uh, recently, this is also increasing. And another potentially promising area of future investment is in the 4IR, the fourth industrial revolution areas, such as tech-based startups, e-commerce, entertainment, and content industry. Uh, increasingly, ASEAN partners are looking to Korea for for entertainment and contents uh, business uh, because of the popularity of K-pop and K-drama in this region. And also, uh, you know, ASEAN is well known for its startups. Uh, there are some, uh, it's a home to some of the largest unicorns such as Gojag, Grab, and Traveloka, etc. And, and there are increasingly a large amount of uh, young startups beginning to uh, grow in this region and um, many Korean uh, investors, the venture capitalists, are looking to this region for further investment. In fact, I recently met a, a CEO of uh, a company called Sparks Labs. It's an um, ex uh, accelerator company, meaning that they help uh, start it, starting startups to, to grow, um, you know, to help them grow into get the foundation for a company. And this CEO, uh, his name is Mr. Kim Yujin, his, he told us that uh, Southeast East Asia is the region that they are really looking into right now for uh, investment um, in the next coming years. And he believes that without investment, without um, uh, working with Southeast Asian partners, you can't really truly call yourself global. So uh, that's, that sounded to me a very promising area of investment in the years to come. Uh, on this side, you see the construction. In construction, ASEAN today is Korea's largest partner. For very many years, Middle East used to be the largest partner for construction um, cooperation, but uh, I, the construction demand in the Middle East has dwindled in recent years. And 
Today, most construction of buildings, you know, power plants, and smart infrastructure is mostly taking place within the ASEAN region. So as ASEAN advances its initiative on the smart city development, uh, you know, in back in 2018, when Singapore was chair of the ASEAN, uh, chair of ASEAN, they, they initiated the ASEAN smart uh, city network, and as the, all the countries begin to make advances on this uh, initiative, cooperation in this area is also expected to grow. In fact, Korea signed an MOU with Malaysia uh, on smart city development uh, with regard to Kota Kinabalu. Currently, Korea has two pilot smart cities, uh, which is uh, Sejong and Busan, and they are now working with Kota Kinabalu uh, for uh, smart city development in the ASEAN region. Um, if you look at the numbers here, uh, you can see that the Philippines is the uh, second largest partner in terms of construction. Now, the growth in construction project in the Philippines naturally owes to President Duterte's Build, Build, Build initiative. And in fact, just a couple of months ago, even in the midst of this uh, coronavirus, a Korean company, uh, we probably know POSCO uh, ENC, won a $290 million deal for building a railway depot uh, for the North-South Railway in the Philippines. So construction and infrastructure building, uh, because of these connectivity uh, uh, projects within ASEAN, and because in the post-corona period, there will, the government will be seeking a lot of stimulating uh, projects, will be increasing demand in the post, uh, you know, there will be an increase in demand for construction and infrastructure development in the post-COVID era. Uh, and this is an area that Korea and ASEAN can also uh, look to for increased partnership. So um, I know we're concentrating on economic uh, cooperation, but uh, for any economic cooperation to go to that next level, you need to have a foundation with the people-to-people -people exchanges. That's why I want to take a little bit of a look at the people-to-people -people exchanges that are taking place between uh, ASEAN and Korea. Now, one area that has been greatly hit by the pandemic and is still uh, struggling uh, is the tourism sector. Uh, traveling has basically come to a halt. You know, airline industries are having a lot of difficulty. And um, because countries are imposing travel bans, quarantine measures, so it's making tourism almost impossible at this point. Uh, but before all of this happened, you can see here that the, um, that, the, that ASEAN was actually the most popular uh, traveling destination for Koreans. So we had over uh, 10 million uh, Koreans going to ASEAN cities uh, last year. And then uh, an increasing number of ASEAN um, people coming to Korea. We have about two, two million, uh, over 2.5 million actually uh, from last year. And the number was growing. In fact, our, our goal as uh, partners was to reach uh, 15 million by uh, this year. Uh, unfortunately, the coronavirus has put a little bit of a hold on that uh, as uh, people are unable to travel at this time. If you look at the number of the direct flights, which is on the uh, left side of the, uh, the presentation, is that uh, this also shows how closely linked the two regions are. You see the the number at the top, if you see the orange graph going up, 1278, uh, that's the number of direct flights every week between ASEAN and Korea. So you can see how the number of uh, direct flights flying you know, to and fro ASEAN cities is really vo voluminous. And uh, last year during the commemorative summit, um, Korea signed an MOU or, or an agreement, Open Skies Agreement, with Singapore and Brunei, and that was expected to increase this uh, direct flight uh, volume uh, between, the, between the region. Let's look at the next slide. Uh, moreover, what you see here is an increasing number of people are residing in each other's countries, uh, contributing to their host community. So in ASEAN, mostly it's the Korean businessmen who are uh, moving to ASEAN and living there, uh, creating their, uh, contributing to the economic development of ASEAN countries. And also in Korea, you can see here, we have, um, in, in addition to the temporary visitors, you have marriage migrants, workers, students, and many people coming to Korea to, to you know, live. Um, one of the positive trends I consider is the increasing number of students coming to Korea to study. We have about, uh, you'll see here, uh, 64, 000, over 64,000 ASEAN students coming to Korea to study. And this is very, um, 
uh, it's an auspicious trend actually because it really tells us a lot about or it, it makes you look forward to the future partnership between Korea and ASEAN uh, with a greater understanding uh, by this uh, young generation. So the understanding of and contribution to ASEAN-Korean partnership by these students who are studying in Korea will indeed be a valuable asset as relations deepen in the future. Uh, you see two pictures here. Um, you're probably wondering what these pictures are about. Uh, uh, this picture is a youth academic workshop that we did at the ASEAN Korea Center where I belong. But uh, in addition to this, what the ASEAN Korea Center did was we launched what is known as the ASEAN Youth Network in Korea. Uh, the acronym is AYNK. And what we did was we collected uh, the, the different student ASEAN student associations in Korea to put them into a group and give them a larger voice and help them be more active in their activities in Korea. And it has been quite successful. Uh, because of that success, what we did what last year was uh, we launched uh, what is known as the Council of ASEAN professors in Korea. So uh, I was surprised to know there was a large number of ASEAN scholars and professors working in Korea. And currently we have about 50 to 60 active members in Cup K, we call it. And uh, we are hoping to get more increased number of participants on in, in, the, uh, in the in the Cup K activity. So they're also contributing to public diplomacy about let, um, helping Koreans understand more about ASEAN and also engaging more with, with with uh, the communities here. Um, uh, on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of ASEAN-Korea dialogue relations last year, uh, the Korean government expanded the overall scholarship volume uh, and scope vis-a-vis -vis ASEAN students. So this would be yet another incentive for more students to come to Korea and study. And in addition to this, the ASEAN-Korea Cooperation Fund. Uh, ASEAN-Korea Co Cooperation Fund is uh, uh, a fund that helps, that is mostly used to promote ASEAN-Korea relations in terms of education or environment cooperation. There are different sectors in, in, the, in the funding uh, scheme. Uh, and this volume has actually been increased to 7 million US dollars last year. And this fund has recently launched a program uh, known as HEAT, H-E-A-T, which stands for Higher Education for ASEAN Talents, which provides a full scholarship opportunity for ASEAN faculty members to support um, their acquisition of doctoral degrees in Korea. Uh, this is to, the, the objective of this is to enhance their expertise and promote people-to-people -people exchanges between Korea and ASEAN universities. So overall, so you've, until now, you've looked at the numbers in trade, in investment, uh, the people-to-people -people exchanges. We can already see that the two regions have evolved into really indispensable partners. It makes no sense for us to uh, uh, not cooperate further because our, our people are already very linked, our trade is linked, our investment is linked. And even politically, uh, the leaders have come together every year during the ASEAN uh, summits to hold the ASEAN-Korea summit. And between 2017 and 19, uh, President Moon Jae-in uh, visited all 10 ASEAN countries to hold bilateral summits with all of the 10 leaders. So, um, you know, President Moon's tour of all the 10 countries was made naturally to further enhance relations with ASEAN. And, you know, ASEAN has always been important to Korea, and the past administrations all em had emphasized the importance of partnership with ASEAN. But it was the current administration, uh, from the beginning of its term in office, that placed priority in this region by announcing a policy initiative, which I believe you already are pretty familiar with, known as the New Southern Policy. Uh, to put it in a nutshell, because I'm sure you've heard about this for the past two years, is the main objective of this policy is to dramatically upgrade its relations with ASEAN in all areas of cooperation. Normally in Korean uh, history or in Korean diplomacy, the major powers, uh, the major partners used to be the major powers that were surrounding Korea geographically. So you have China and Japan, US and, and Russia. But uh, we call our emphasis on ASEAN as the fifth, you know, the large, uh, um, fifth pillar of our diplomacy, basically. Um, yes, so uh, the vision of this policy here, as you can see here, is, the, um, is to build an ASEAN-Korea community of shared future. 
a future of common peace, a future of common prosperity centered on our peoples. Now this direction is well in alignment with the current president's people first policy, uh, people first philosophy, I'm sorry, and also with ASEAN's principle of building a people centered and people oriented community. So um, I'm not going to read this out to you. You can look at the PowerPoint later. This is a roadmap that was laid down in the beginning. You can actually find this at the uh, website of the, uh, the committee of the New Southern Policy. Um, if you look at a, take, if you take a closer look at some of the sh these are some actually some of the short to midterm goals that were set out in the beginning when the policy was announced and some of them have been actually uh, already achieved for example if you look here it says invigorating exchange between heads of states and high ranking officials you know i just mentioned the president moon had already visited all the 10 countries so this is an area where there has been a lot of progress and in other areas too they are they're making a very they, they have been making very significant progress on until uh, you know the outbreak of the coronavirus, which has put a little bit of a um, tamper on on our um, partnership. Um, the policy was first announced back in 2017, and as one of the first milestones was made last year, as Korea hosted the uh, third commemorative summit and, with ASEAN and the first uh, Mekong Korea summit. So you know. Um, According to ASEAN guidelines, actually, the usually commemorative summits with, uh, between ASEAN and the dialogue partners are held every 10 years. That's my understanding. But in Korea's case, the first three were held five years apart from each other. And uh, this, uh, I guess there were some negotiations done to, for this exception, but this exception itself is a demonstration of this very fast evolving uh, relationship between ASEAN and Korea. Here, what you're seeing is some of the deliverables from the commemorative summit last year that were included in the outcome document. Um, it's, it's not comprehensive. I've took out some of the major uh, deliverables. But you can see in the, bu the bulk of achievement in the prosperity sector. So you can see that as much as ASEAN-Korea relations is very comprehensive, there is a very uh, huge emphasis on the economic partnership between the two regions. Uh, you know, it, it really shows the commitment of the leaders about bolstering um, the mutually beneficial uh, economic partnership between Korea and ASEAN. Uh, one. Uh, one uh, character that uh, I want to take note is the uh, establishment of various centers. You have Science and Technology Cooperation Center. You have the Standardization Joint Research Center and Industrial Innovation Center. Uh, these centers have not been established yet. This was, uh, it was a proposal made during the summit and then a proposal that was agreed to by all the 11 uh, participants of the summit. And I believe they are now in, pr in, the, in progress, you know, trying to establish these centers. But once they are established, you can see that it, this will provide an institutional framework on which even greater and even mutually beneficial economic partnerships can be built. Because if you look at all of them, they're really um, forward-looking and they will uh, provide uh, the foundations for uh, uh, strengthening the, the growth engines for the future, uh, so to allow for sustainable growth not only in Korea but also in ASEAN and especially for many of the developing countries in ASEAN to leapfrog into the uh, fourth industrial revolution era. Um, yes. And here are some outcomes from the bilateral meetings. Uh, the negotiations with Philippines, I had mentioned earlier, the FDA uh, made some impressive progress and the two sides agreed on the early achievement of package, uh, achievement package of goods under uh, FDA negotiations. Uh, with Indonesia, of course, they concluded the SIPA negotiations, the Comprehensive um, Economic Partnership Agreement. And also, the, one of the big deliverables was the Hyundai's uh, mega investment in auto manufacturing plant in Indonesia. And actually, early this year, they already did a groundbreaking ceremony for the investments. Um, you know, just like the Samsung mega investment in Vietnam, we believe that this Hyundai's large investment in, in Indonesia will uh, be will have lasting effects in terms of 
uh, in terms of you know in increasing the investment and increasing the overall trade between uh, ASEAN between Indonesia and Korea first, and then with ASEAN and Korea, and it also contributes to diversifying the currently over concentration in one country. So up until now, um, you have seen the many developments as economic partners between ASEAN and Korea. And up until December 2019, this was, you know, we were on an upward trend, uh, having successfully hosted the commemorative summit with many meaningful deliverables. You know, hopes were really high in Korea and ASEAN for an increased partnership between the two. Um, I can tell you from um, our center as well, we were preparing in January of this year for the, the beginning of the new 30 years of ASEAN and Korea. And we were uh, you know, developing various programs that will actually help implement some of the agreements that were made during the commemorative summit. Now, a lot of momentum was created, and both sides were really ready to take full advantage of this momentum to expand business cooperation and people-to-people -people exchanges. But as you all know, the coronavirus broke out in late December. And it hit Korea first. Uh, in March, I believe it was the first spike, and then continuing on to affect some of the ASEAN countries from the second quarter. We're still in the midst of this crisis. And uh, if you look at here, I've jotted down some of the impacts of the coronavirus on the economy. Um, it's, it's still affecting our uh, economy, so we don't know where this will end. But one thing for sure is that it has definitely uh, become a huge challenge for not just the region, but also the entire world uh, and in terms, of, um, uh, in terms of health, you know, the health of the people, in terms of people's safety, and also the economic, you know, the lives and the livelihoods of, of the communities in this region and the world. So this is the impact of the coronavirus on the economy. And then you see here the underlying challenges in the region, which were there already, but they've been exacerbated by the COVID-19. So in the beginning, there was some supply chain disruptions. You know, when the virus first broke out in China, some of the factories in China were shutting down, and then trade was being affected. And while countries were making efforts to keep the supply chain afloat, we actually did see a 7.7 .7 decrease in trade between Korea and ASEAN in the first two quarters of 2020. Uh, restrictions in movement, travel bans uh, are, you know, have been a huge blow to tourism, as I had mentioned earlier. Uh, cooperative measures are being discussed to ensure movement of um, essential peoples and essential uh, goods. And we're trying to, there are discussions about creating travel bubbles between some countries where uh, the, the curve is beginning to flatten. But I believe for any tour-related, you know, non-essential uh, uh, traveling to resume, it appears that this will have to take some time. Um, the restrictions in movement uh, has also affected the labor market. And in places like the Philippines, you know, where remittance uh, makes up about over 8% of the G its GDP, this has also had a severe effect in, uh, as the virus spread to actually a 13% decline in remittances. So, you know, the general slowdown of the economy, global economy led to naturally decreases in investments here. And, um, you know, countries struggle as the, to keep the economies going. And many countries have, all 10 ASEAN countries actually have uh, uh, laid down its stimulus, uh, rolled out stimulus packages. And, you know, foreign investment will definitely be uh, crucial to ensure sufficient flow of capital for economic rebound. But uh, the difficulty is the uncertainties. Uh, you know, investors are not willing to uh, make the risk of investment in this kind of period. And also, it's, it's, these uncertainties are driving the negative sentiment. And this may actually stay for a while, even after uh, the uh, certain control level of control of the virus, until a vaccine is actually developed. So there could be some hesitance in the investors. Um, whoops, sorry, there we go. Now, ASEAN and Korea, uh, based on their steadfast relationship, have been cooperating from the outset of the, uh, of the virus outbreak. So Korea, having successfully contained the virus after its first wave in March, uh, we shared our know-how in terms of massive testing about, of contact tracing, uh, supplies of test kits and uh, PPE, the uh, personal protective equipment, were also shared uh, with ASEAN countries. 
Um, you know, another very positive uh, uh, background to ASEAN-Korea relationship is that we have overcome several crises before, you know, not, not, not only in the um, health area. For example, like SARS and MERS, this, these are some crises that uh, ASEAN and Korea have had the experience of having overcome before. But the most notable crisis that we overcame together uh, is back in 1997 and 1998, the Asian financial crisis, which actually led to various uh, institutional um, uh, solutions that are helping us be more resilient, like the Chiang Mai Initiative and also the AMRO and you know the, the, the financial cooperation institutions and the systems that were made uh, following the, the crisis. So we can say that crisis actually became an opportunity for increased regional cooperation in the financial sector. And I mean, believe, um, you know, the ASEAN plus three countries continue to discuss about ways to overcome this crisis as well. And this could be actually another opportunity for this region to build up a very resilient, strong system in terms of health, uh, uh, safety, um, and, you know, dealing with uh, non-traditional uh, security challenges on the human security. So indeed, uh, there was a uh, several ASEAN Plus Three meetings. There was also a special summit back in April, uh, where the leaders came on um, to online to in the summit to uh, confirm their commitments to work together in ensuring movement, uh, to keep borders open for trade, and not to resort to protectionist measures and so on. So you know, ASEAN and Korea are placing more importance uh, on FTAs, and in fact. Uh, that's why the, I had mentioned the negotiations with, of FTA with Cambodia that actually began in the midst of the coronavirus. Uh, so, you know, the, the importance that this region places on, on free trade has been, can be shown through this kind of actions. And also calls are being made in the region for the absolute need to quickly uh, make progress on the RCEP so as to overcome the current challenges in uh, regional trade. The crisis also appears to have opened um, new opportunities, a window of opportunities in ASEAN-Korea cooperation, especially in this part, you know. Uh, sectors such as biotechnology and health are receiving much attention nowadays, um, and the two sides are considering opening up a regular dialogue channel for cooperation. Uh, digitalization is also being accelerated, I mean, naturally, because uh, people can't do anything other, other than being online. So, you know, education is going uh, online, um, uh, shopping is going online. A lot of services are moving to the online platform, so digitalization is naturally being accelerated because of this virus. Um, as I said, online education, e-commerce, mobile app services, and automation are becoming the norm and are opening up new opportunities for greater cooperation in the untacked sector. Uh, Korea has a strong foundation of IT technology. Uh, we have been an attractive partner for a long time by ASEAN countries in terms of uh, IT development and will continue to emerge as an attractive partner for ASEAN as investments are made and projects are launched to advance digitalization. And as I mentioned earlier, but after COVID-19, I believe the governments will also launch major infrastructure projects in order to stimulate the uh, economy and revive the economy. And these are also areas that uh, for expanded cooperation between ASEAN and Korea because we are already very close uh, construction infrastructure partners. Um, Yes, so these are some of the opportunities that we have uh, uh, that are emerging out of the COVID-19 crisis that can actually uh, open up new horizons in ASEAN-Korea economic cooperation, not just upgrade and you know, expand from what we built on uh, in the past 30 years, but open up new opportunities in different areas uh, and new sectors uh, that hasn't been, you know, that hasn't had much attention before. So, so far, we've reviewed some of the major aspects of ASEAN-Korea Economic Partnership, and I've also identified the way forward for greater uh, mutual prosperity. Um, at this time, I would like to bring your attention to the organization that I belong to, uh, which is the ASEAN-Korea Center. So if you can bear with me a little bit more, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about uh, the ASEAN Korea Center, because I think it'll be very useful information for your uh, future work. 
Now, the ASEAN Korea Center, I want to give you a little bit of history, is that it was established back in 2009 on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of ASEAN Dialogue Relations. So last year, we actually celebrated our 10th anniversary while uh, the two regions were celebrating their 30th anniversary of Dialogue Partnership. Our vision is to be a key player in building a lasting uh, and genuine partnership between ASEAN and Korea. It sounds all very good. And we are mandated to plan and carry out programs. This is our mandate to increase trade volume, um, you know, something that we're talking about today in this lecture, to accelerate investment flows, to invigorate tourism, and to enrich cultural and P2P exchanges. So our mandates include everything except maybe the political sector, which has to be done by the government, right? So we are an intergovernmental organization, we are an international organization, and our highest decision-making body is the Council, which is made up of representatives from Korea and 10 ASEAN member states, usually a director general level in the government. Uh, the executive board, uh, which meets more frequently, are made up of representatives from the ASEAN embassies in Korea and the director of ASEAN cooperation of the Korean Foreign Ministry. Now, I belong to the secretariat here, and the current secretary general is Ambassador Lee Hyuk, who had actually previously served as the Korean ambassador to the Philippines and to Vietnam. So there is a lot of expertise in our center on ASEAN matters. Um, there are four units you can see here in the center, and the trade and investment unit is largely responsible, naturally, for promoting um, economic cooperation and networking among ASEAN and Korean businesses. So this next slide shows the goals of the center. This was actually the goals that we had for this year uh, before the COVID-19. And we're still trying to achieve these goals uh, regardless of the virus, but uh, having a little bit of, um, you know, facing some challenges in, in, as we go along. But anyhow, you can see that our first goal um, is uh, focuses on providing an effective platform for economic cooperation between ASEAN and Korea. Now, one of the strengths of the ASEAN Korea Center is our invitation programs. Usually we invite ASEAN business delegates to Korea for, you know, to showcase their products, for uh, pitching for uh, increased investments in, in their companies, and also partnering, one-to-one -one business meetings, partnering opportunities. Uh, Unfortunately, we are unable to do that because they can't travel right now, but we are taking most of these programs online. So, as I mentioned, the outbreak of COVID-19 has hampered many of our programs, as you know, we do fairs, exhibitions, uh, they've been canceled and they've been, uh, difficult, become difficult, but we are closely working with our partners to open as many uh, online business meetings and partnering programs as possible. Now, this is actually a page out of our uh, brochure uh, for the year 2020. And here you can see some of the programs that we uh, related to trade and investment. So most of the, these programs have, again, been shifted online. Uh, some will continue to take place offline. For example, like product exhibitions, we don't need to necessarily have the business delegates come, but we can just exhibit the product. So those things will still take place offline. So you can see here that we focus on ASEAN consumer goods in Korea. So uh, in, in promoting ASEAN consumer goods in Korea, this is primarily to address the trade imbalance issue between Korea and ASEAN so that more imports can come from ASEAN countries. Uh, one of our flagship uh, programs is the ASEAN Connectivity Forum. Uh, the goal is to present as many connectivity and infrastructure projects in Korea, uh, in ASEAN actually, to Korean investors uh, that are in need of financing and try to match them up with investors in Korea. Another area of focus, which has a more longer term objective, is cooperation in the 4IR sector. And here, business meetings are carried out together with capacity building programs for technical cooperation. Here, this page shows some programs we did with the Philippines and with Malaysia uh, in past years. Uh, as for the startup program, we did an ASEAN Korea Startup Week last year as part of the commemorative summit. And here, a Malaysian startup uh, known as SERV, S-E-R-V, won a pr prize, actually, uh, following a pitching contest last year. And this company has actually been invited again to, to, um, to a scale-up program in Korea uh, in September. And Thank you, everyone, for, for taking the time to listen to this lecture. I hope this was a helpful uh, presentation for you. I ask you to all please stay healthy and safe during these difficult times, and hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.